Now, today I've decided I'd like to talk about kendo. Now, as you know, I have practiced kendo when I was in Japan. So I practiced it for three years. I'm not a master nor an expert, but I have no real understanding of this martial art. Now, there are some things that I like and some things that I don't like, and I would like to share these things with you. But before doing that, I think it's very important, perhaps dramatically important, to understand thoroughly what kendo is supposed to be and what kendo actually is in reality. Now, kendo as we know it today is a modern martial art which comes and derives from ancient kenjutsu. Now, kenjutsu is an umbrella term which includes a whole variety of schools of sword practiced by ancient samurai, ancient Japanese samurai, um, as early as the Kamakura period. Now, the idea of practicing with chinai and protective bogu or armor has been around since Shotoku era. But the first Gekiken, or uh, full contact sparring, started to appear in the 1820s. Modern Kendo, however, is a very simplified form of fighting uh, with a katana. As a matter of fact, the way they created modern Kendo through the uh, current federation was to take many different Kenjutsu styles and trying to, and as they were trying to unify them together, they started taking things and removing things from all the styles and creating one uh, coherent style. Now, the whole principle and idea behind this perhaps was interesting, but the problem is deeper than that. Uh, you have to consider that during the Second World War, the occupying powers and forces f prohibited martial arts in Japan, as that could have been, could have been a kind of a sort of militaristic mentality and they were trying to remove that from the people. So that was one of the reasons why Kendo was banned at one point and then it came back again in this current modern version which is in between a martial art and a sport. Now if you ask me, I think it's still closer to a martial art than it is to a sport but it does have some sports like um, simplifications that actually make it not that effective if we compare it to other more ancient styles. Now, please notice that I say the word problem. Now, that is, of course, the fact that I consider this simplification to be an issue is just my opinion, of course, and normally the uh, standard um, response to that, the standardized response to that, is the fact that Kendo is not supposed to be a martial art that teaches you how to use a katana to kill an opponent, but it's actually a way, considering it finishes with a character door, which means street or spiritual in a way, it should be a form of personal growth and spiritual growth in order to become a better person, not be against your opponent, but through your opponent. So it's not that I don't understand this, I understand this quite well. They taught me this in Japan. I respect that. However, I do feel it's very important for me to explain a few things to you viewers who, like me, are interested in real samurai combat. And I know that the reason why some of you are interested in getting closer to Kendo is because you are interested in that. I know that because I am just like you. So, although we understand that that is the final purpose of Kendo, um, I have to say that if you are interested in samurai combat, then you should look into Kenjutsu. And that is what I am doing right now. I am starting to study Kenjutsu. So first of all, one thing that you can learn in Kendo, is for, which is a positive thing, is how to grip a katana. So even if you're using a shinai, the first, one of the first things that they teach you is toraguchi. Now toraguchi literally means the mouth of the tiger. And what they teach you is that when you grip a sword, which is a katana or a shinai or bokuto, you should not grip it like a hammer. This would be wrong. But your hands need to form a little V-shape that you can see here. This is called the mouth of the tiger, and it's the proper way of holding a Japanese sword. So you learn proper grip, you also learn discipline, which is very important. You learn, you learn tempo, which means that you're going to learn how many things you can real, realistically do within a given time in a fight. And you're going to learn how to balance and judge distance for your attacks and your defences. So the first problem that I have with Kendo is the fact that it simplifies too much the stances or ready positions. Now in Kendo, in, in our day, we, we only have Chudan no Kamae, which is a stance where you have 
your right foot in front, which remains in front all the time, another negative thing, but we'll talk about this in a minute, and you, you hold your sword in front of you, and the tip of your sword is pointing to the throat of your opponent. And then you have Jodan no Kamae, so your left foot goes forward, as, I, as far as I was taught in Kendo, your fist remains up towards where your forehead is, but it, there needs to be one uh, fist of distance, so you don't really do this in Kendo, and you hold it like this. Um, and these are the two main stances you have in modern Kendo. You do have Gedan, uh, which is the low stance. The problem is that in Kendo, this one is only done by lowering a little bit the tip of the sword, whereas in original Kenjutsu, this one was supposed to go all the way down to the knee. Now, these two, kind of three, are the only stances used in combat. So, Chudan, Jodan. Now, there are other stances in Kendo, but you only find them in uh, kata, or forms. For example, you have Waki, which is this one here. Now, some people have asked me this, and they ask me, aren't you supposed to lower your hips when you perform Waki? Well, I think you're getting confused with Kenjutsu and the Shano Kamae, because Shano Kamae is like this. So, you lower your hips, and the sword stays flat. Now, in Waki, as far as I know, it said your hips are not lowered, and the sword looks down. Now, this is an incredibly effective Kamae, and I, am in, I was really disappointed by the fact that you do not use it in Kendo, and I've heard some people even saying that if you use it, it would be awkward. But that is stupid that you think that it would be awkward. That term is absolutely out of place. Now, Waki and Shano Kamae were incredibly effective Kamae. The fact that they are not effective in Kendo today is because they removed a lot of possible cuts because you only have a certain areas of the body that you can attack. This is another problem that I have. Um, in modern Kendo, you can only score a point, or your hit is considered valid, if you hit the forehead, the sides of the head, um, the throat with a tsuki, um, if you cut the door, meaning the sides of your torso, or the right kote if the opponent is in Chudan no Kamae. If the opponent is in Jodan no Kamae, then you can also hit the left uh, hand and score a point. But if your opponent is in Chudan no Kamae, you cannot do that. It's not going to be a point. Also, um, you cannot thrust the torso. You could do it before, but consider... So this thing has actually changed all the time. At first you could thrust the torso, then they removed it and only allowed you to thrust the throat. And the reason for that is because when they actually added thrusting the, the torso with the kisaki of the sword, the tip, um, all the Jodan no Kamae practitioners started losing. Um, but again, they started losing not because Jodan no Kamae is not effective, but for another reason, which is the next point that I don't like in Kendo. Now let's say that you were in Jodan no Kamae and your opponent is in Chiyuda no Kamae. Now your opponent thrusts you, okay, in the torso, let's say that he was allowed, and gets the point. A split second after that, you go down with a diagonal cut and you cut him here, okay, exactly where your traps are. Now that's not going to be a point because that's not an area that is valid and also you even did it a split of a second after he did. So he's getting the point, you lost. That makes absolutely no sense, because if someone taps you with the tip of a sword, um, you're not going to die, most likely. Instead, if someone cuts you from a Jodan no Kamae, where your traps is, where your traps are, is most likely going to kill you and probably cut you all the way through your lung, your, your left lung, for example, slicing your heart in half. But that's not valid. So Jodan no Kamae had a disadvantage in that case, because in a real fighting situation no one would try to tip in you with a sword, exposing completely your head to a counter-attack. And if your opponent was an armoured samurai, then wearing a, a, a door, an actual armour, like the one I own, that you've seen in my channel, then never mind thrusting, you know, you're not going to go through the bands of the plate, and you are going to be decapitated. So Jodan no Kamae would become a lot more effective in that case. Although some people say that Jodan no Kamae started to become more um, 
popular in Japan after they started to stop using armor. I have no idea why, but I still think that in a situation where I'm wearing a plate, armored um, chest a protection or, or breastplate, I can be a lot more confident when I do this. But anyway, so that's just beyond the point. So because of all of this, um, Jodan no Kamae was starting to become less effective. People started to use Chudan no Kamae was becoming a bit dull. So what they did, they solved the problem by simply removing the thrust to the torso. Whereas as far as I'm concerned, they should have started, they should have done it another way, allowing people to cut other areas and increasing the number of targets. That would have made it a lot more interesting, but it's just my opinion, of course. Continuing, so Waki no Gamae goes away because you cannot have diagonal cuts to the legs, for example, which were very nice in Waki Gamae. Um, you can't really have an uprising cut, where you, whereas you did in the past, in Kenjutsu. Um, so Waki no Gamae becomes very, very ineffective, because the only thing you can actually do is to bring the sword up and go for a men, as far as or the attack straight to the head, uh, as far as modern kendo rules are concerned, or perhaps go up and down again to cut the torso, it makes no sense. But again, bring back all the cuts, I say, and then things are starting to get um, a lot more in interesting. As a matter of fact, when I spar with my friends, I do this. We cut everywhere, we consider the body full target. Now, another kamae that is disappeared is Hasso kamae. I don't understand why, again. Hasso no Kamae is perfect because it's in between a Chudan and a Jodan. Your sword is not as easy to control as it would be in Chudan. Um, you lose a bit of reach, of course, just like you do in Jodan, but you're not as exposed, all right? particularly your left um, uh, fist. So it's a good in-between, I think. And again, this is very nice for sparring. I've tried it. It works. Um, the Japanese masters said, used to say, at least in Kendrick, so that you should normally use um, Hasson no Kamae when you are sparring against many different opponents, particularly if you are um, against a wall, so you can't really perform other Kamae. Interesting point, I still find it a very good Kamae. It's a shame that it don't use it in Kendo anymore. Another problem is footwork. Now, in Kendo, they teach you to, in Chuda no Kamae at least, to keep your right leg in front, so when you move forward, you cannot perform a step. You cannot have the left leg go in front of the, or the right leg, unless you're changing into switching stance to Jodan no Kamae. So you just go forward and back. So you just go forward and back, with the same foot in front, even when you cut. Now, what I like is that when my cut comes from the right, I want my right leg in front, but when my cut comes from the left, I want my left leg in front. That is one thing that it was present in Kenjutsu, and it disappears in Kendo. As a matter of fact, when people, um, are, for example, are like this, one against the other, you have Kushinai in this position, a lot of Kendoka just perform a kind of a jump back, extending the men, hitting the opponent. Um, interesting technique, but it's the only thing they can do in that situation. That is something I don't like, because then you see people performing the same techniques all the time, personally, just my opinion. Um, instead, I like the idea of perhaps going back just with a step and attacking the opponent. Again, that's not permitted in modern kendo. Jodan no Kamae, I noticed that uh, a lot of kenjutsu practitioners open their, their bosom when they go into um, Jodan no Kamae. Now, in kendo, you normally open your, your, your bosom and, and stretch your shoulders in the moment of, of the attack. So again, it makes sense as well in Kendo that Kendo practitioners stay like this rather than staying like that. But I, I think again, I would like to be able to choose as a, a swordsman rather than having to stick to one possible option. An interesting technique though that they taught me in Kendo when you attack in Jodan no Kamae, but again, a technique that I think it depends. It can be effective, but other times it might not be. Using your right hand as a to push. So what you do, right before extending and opening your chest, you're actually going to leave the sword to the left, the left hand and perform something like this. Now I can't really do it properly because I need to hit something. Let me see if I can find something to hit. There we go, lovely. So if I want to hit this with a Jodan no Kamae, rather than doing this, okay, I can use my right hand to give 
one final push leaving for extra reach and power like this now interesting technique but not all the time I would like to do that I wouldn't, wouldn't want to do that all the time because because again in a sports situation in a competition or practice if I lose my sword by doing this and I just drop it it's not a problem my, my opponent is just going to do this wait and I take the sword but in a real fight situation what happens if I lose my sword if I have enough time to grab my wakizashi or my tanto I can still fight but of course my opponent is, has an advantage now and we're talking about my life now and if I don't if I'm not quick enough to reach for my sword because perhaps I'm losing balance in the process I might die so it's a technique that I would use but not all the time um, because in a real fight situation there are a lot of other variables that come into place. Another problem that I have with kendo uh, footwork is that they tell you to rise the left heel. They, want, they do that because they want to give you extra propulsion uh, kind of sort of to jump uh, on you, your opponent. Interesting, but I prefer to keep my left foot down, pointing slightly outward. I feel more secure that way, and I make sure I don't lose balance. Sometimes I use the raised heel, other times I don't. So again, it's an interesting style, it was a great experience for me to practice, but I have to say that I personally think that I am more interested in Kenjutsu and perhaps even Yaijutsu or Yaido. Now, there are many other stances that I could talk about describing ancient kenjutsu. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to talk about it in this video, otherwise it would get too long. But if you're interested and you want me to examine each single stance of ancient kendo and kenjutsu, please let me know in the comments below. Also, let me leave you with this question. Are you more inclined and interested in the kendo and its spiritual growth and inner path? Or would you be more interested in the, um, in the ancient kenjutsu, which also had some Zen teaching, but at the same time, it was teaching you how to be effective in cutting as many bodies as possible in a battlefield? Or would you rather choose Yaido, the more classy and stylish martial art? Well, let me know in the comments below. Alright then, that is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching as always, and remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Sayonara.